this is not your usual feel good self help book in fact this will trigger you you will rebel against what it says but you should read it nonetheless and your future self will thank you for it i get asked for book recommendations almost every other day and this one has been a constant in every list i gave out almost ever since i've read it you know if there is one self help book that everyone should read and in fact everyone can read because it's not one of those boring self help books it is the book i'm talking about in this video hello good people of the internet welcome to a very special episode of the unlearning playground podcast today what i'm doing is i'm reviewing one of my favorite books and you know with a guy like me i think i would expect myself when i say that i'm reviewing one of my favorite books to review one of the books that is placed in this section here you know within this section i think there are at least a dozen books that i've devoured multiple times over the years and have loved over so many years but still when i chose to review a book today i decided to review what is probably the most recent addition to my list of my favorite books and it is this book the courage to be disliked by ishiro kishimi and fumitake koga i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing these names correctly by the way these are japanese names but this is a beautiful beautiful book and i think what i love the most about this book is that i've had so many friends over the years who have asked me book recommendations about philosophy or non fiction self help books and for some reason they can't seem to get over those books for some reason they can't seem to spend enough time to actually understand those books and i think almost all of them come back and say that this was a very tough read or this was a very boring read or it just too much too much for me and i cannot read this i think to all of them i can safely say that if you read just this one book i think it can be enough and this is a very different non fiction book you know for most of non fiction books you might expect the author to go on and on about some topics for so many pages this book is not written in that format it's written in the format of a dialogue so there is this wise guy this wise philosopher who has let's just say understood the truth about life and there is a young man who is burning with questions and who is burning with the dissatisfaction he has with his life and he wants answers and he goes to this wise guy and now it's this conversation that is spent i think over 6 or 7 nights that they converse and that is what is recorded in this book and what is so beautiful is that it's not that the young man is simply accepting the answers being given to him the sky is rebelling against them the sky is asking deeper insightful questions against what the wise guy is actually telling him and then all of this is captured in the form of dialogues so i think w- what i really love about this book is that it embodies its own title the courage to be disliked i'm sure when you read this book you will dislike it there will be parts of this book that will trigger you there will be parts of this book that you will rebel against and that is the beauty of this book i think those are the sections of the book which are telling you that this is the part of your life that you most need to work on and i think i can safely say that i'm going to give this to almost all of my friends now so for all the upcoming birthdays and marriage anniversaries and even marriages for that matter i think my friends can expect me to gift them this book so I think what I wanted to do in this episode was without giving anything away from what he's talking about because of course I cannot cover the entire book within this video I still wanted to make sure that for the stubborn ones who would still not go and read this book they at least have this video and they at least have my gist of understanding of this book I'm not covering anything I'm not covering everything but what I am covering is four major unlearnings that I think are an essential part of this book and i think if if you find yourself being triggered by what i'm about to say in these four unlearnings you should consider reading this book so without further ado let's get into it unlearning number 1 from this book is actually a recurrent theme throughout the book and it is very beautifully explained i personally would not have used these exact same words but the unlearning is that trauma does not exist and i think it is a very triggering thing to say right it almost sounds as if the author is trying to gaslight your emotions is trying to belittle your life situation your problems your sufferings etc but they are doing none of that 
what these words actually try to convey is the fact that trauma does not exist in the present moment it what has happened has already happened and the only thing keeping that trauma alive is actually your own ego is actually your own sense of self that you have built around it and a great part of that ego a great part of that sense of self is a matter of choice now you are choosing your life to be arranged in such a manner that that trauma can stay alive because that is the way you navigate the world that is the way you perceive the world and therefore that is what is true for you and therefore your ego is the one keeping your trauma alive your trauma has no existence apart from your own ego now and this is such a relieving thing to understand but i think it's also something which is quite central to almost all forms of self healing really i have personally felt with a lot of my clients that people tend to take a good few number of sessions a good few number of hours of unlearning and uh, unraveling their um, their messed up um, knots to actually realize to actually get to the fact that they are the ones keeping their traumas alive and this book does a brilliant job of explaining it does a brilliant job of hitting you in the face with the truth that trauma does not really exist and i think if you feel triggered by it you must read this book the second key takeaway from this book is this idea of separation of tasks now this is something i think which is not too triggering for people but this is something that we tend to often miss out on what he means when he talks about separation of tasks is the fact that you know in a lot of situations our problems are not really with the situation itself but rather with how other people are reacting to the situation or how <coughs> other people are um, perceiving the situation and we want to control that we want to control the perceptions and the reactions and the responses of other people and he tries to make you understand that that is not your job someone else's perception someone else's response is not your task it is their task so this is real freedom isn't it he actually conveys you the idea that life is as simple as trying to understand what your job what your task is in any given situation performing it to the best of your ability and then letting other people do the same that's pretty much it you don't have to worry about someone else's tasks because that is where you need to draw a line you cannot control everything so try to realize the processes the outcomes that you have control over to the extent you have control over them and then do your best job at it and have yourself separated from someone else's tasks unlearning number 3 from this book is another term that i've actually learned for the first time here he talks about something called life lies or in simpler terms some truths that we think are true and we live our, our complete lives with those truths and we later on understand that they were nothing but life lies a few examples he says a lot of people are convinced that our past controls us and this is true right a lot of people believe that we are nothing but a resultant uh, momentum of whatever causes and effects have already happened with us and therefore our past controls us in that sense now this is nothing but a lie because even though you are really a resultant momentum of what has already happened with you each moment has a certain freshness to it has a certain choice that comes along with it and if you are able to tap into that freshness that is where you realize that you're not just a resultant vector you're not just a resultant momentum of what has already happened in the past and just in that sense your past does not really control you and therefore you can also change which brings me to another life lie that he talks about a lot of people are convinced with the idea that because their life has been a certain way because their experiences have been a certain way they cannot change anymore this is also false everyone can change who wants to and in fact the biggest obstacle to changing is our own selves is our own ego and another life lie that comes to my mind right now is the fact that people think that freedom lies somewhere in the future it cannot be achieved in the present moment it can and if you think this is the truth check out the book the fourth and final takeaway i would want to talk about from this book is 
a beautiful section of the book which is quite towards the end where he is trying to explain to this young man he is trying to convince him to try and see life from a bigger perspective to try and see life from the perspective of life with a capital l and not just your own limited selfish lens to see life from a community lens rather and the way he had explained i think it reminded me of that beautiful quote from rabindranath tagore i don't remember the exact words but it was something along the lines of he who plants trees knowing fully well that he will never sit in their shade has finally started to understand the true meaning of life and this is exactly what is explained in the book right towards the end so i think it's a beautiful section and if you want to have a clearer understanding of what this quote is about what the section is about make sure you read the book you know now that i've talked about four things that are my key takeaways from this book four unlearnings via this book that i would want to convey to everyone i would also want to talk about one thing about this book that i did not like and it was that you know this book the philosopher who is teaching this young man he talks about a school of philosophy that was supposedly um propagated by this guy called adler so this is um, he was a contemporary of sigmund freud i think i think so but he in this book a lot of times adler's name comes in and this guy the philosopher is trying to explain concepts and ideas and truths about life via the name of adler saying that adler used to say so adler used to teach so etc and while i understand doing that there's nothing to wrong with it i think there has to be a level of discernment that the reader now needs to inculcate because things such as this can very easily lead to a hero worship can very easily lead to what is actually going wrong with almost all of psychology philosophy religion right we tend to focus much more on the messenger than the message so while i am not too much against um appreciating someone who's given forward a good idea and has led to a bigger understanding for humanity but focusing too much on the name focusing too much on the person can actually derail people of the actual message and this this actually reminds me of that quote from i think jeddu krishna murthy but i'm never sure if he was actually the one who said it he says the quote goes something like this no one listened to the buddha and that is why we have buddhism a lot of people think of buddhism as worshiping buddha while it could be nothing could be farther from the tru- truth nothing could be farther from the teaching start buddha actually really gave so yeah i think this is one thing i wanted to talk about and it's off my chest now well okay then i think with this we come to the end of everything i wanted to talk about in this episode i hope i was able to move you enough to at least consider reading this book if you are considering it make sure you check out the book on amazon via the link down below in the show notes i hope it will be an affiliate link by the time i upload this episode but even if it's not i'm going to paste the link at uh, the vanilla link to amazon anyway so make sure you go check out the book make sure you read it and the usual stuff make sure you like the video make sure you share it with your friends so that they can consider reading one of the most impactful books they will ever have the good fortune of coming across make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you leave the show a rating review on your podcast platform of choice and one more thing there is another video in which i had talked about three perspectives about life talking about life from three different lenses and it's also something that this author touches in this book also so i thought it will be a good related video to suggest to you guys it would be appearing in your screen right now or in the show notes below make sure you check it out and i'll see you in the playground the next time until next time peace out